Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher, and welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, today we've got a short one, but it's gonna be a good one, I promise. So I'm gonna be checking out a new video from the Blowing Up channel that is awesome in mockumentary, funny history videos. They're called Docu DeBerry. I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, I thought this one would be really fun to check out. Now this one is called, Why Did Mr. Krabs Join the Axis Powers? Well, I'm sorry to break your hearts for all of you that grew up watching SpongeBob. Well, let's find out why he did it. Okay, the original video is gonna be down below. Promise if you like this, you're gonna like all the other stuff that they're putting out. Please sub to their channel. They're awesome. Let's get started. All right, oh no. There's Mr. Krabs hanging out with the Japanese Imperial Army. All right, why did he join the Axis? What happened? Okay, here we go. Why did Mr. Krabs join the Axis powers? Eugene Krabs was born in- Cut that part. Let me turn the volume. Okay. Actually back. Three, two. All right, okay, here's Mr. Krabs. Chilling with the Japanese army. Let's see why he chose the Axis. Why did Mr. Krabs join the Axis powers? Eugene Krabs was born in 1942 mm -hmm. in the city of Bikini Bottom, mm -hmm. located off the coast of the Marshall <laughs> Islands the in the one. Pacific Ocean. Is that true, by the way? Is that where Bikini Bottom is supposed to be, by the Marshall Islands? That's pretty great, though, because it was a major setting for... Um, World War II and the war in the Pacific. Crabs often reach adulthood one year after their birth, and by 1943, Mr. Crabs was using sonar beams off the back of the Krusty Krab in order to detect <laughs> Allied naval positions. Just the he then transmitted I mean, this. <coughs> Marshall Islands, again, were um, pivotal for the United States, too, so I guess you could see why you know, it would be Allied ships. Data to the Japanese Empire in exchange for future Krusty Krab franchises across <laughs> their growing territory. He, he got a better deal. Following the war, Krusty Mr. Krab Krabs' treachery became public knowledge, and as a result, the Marshall Islands were selected for nuclear weapon yep. tests. Yep. Um, I think that one, correct me if I'm wrong, is of um, Castle Bravo. That one may not be the specific one, but it's that setting um, in that region. But uh, the largest of the thermonuclear devices um, the United States has ever um, developed, at least for above ground detonation, that area is ruined from all of that stuff. And they had, uh, there were, you know, indigenous people there. They all had to leave and like never able to go back. Um, yeah, that that place is rough still. I have a big picture of this in my um, in my classroom and, you know, refer to it. And we talk about that kind of stuff by the United States. Over 20 nukes were detonated near Bikini <laughs> oh, no! Bottom, causing billions of dollars in property damage and spikes in cancer rates. Mr. Krabs continues to hide all of his money in his mattress, out of fear that the United States will seize his assets. It, yeah, it would happen. <laughs> all right, no, that was quick final thoughts, though. All right, so that was one of the quicker ones. It was a minute and 13, and usually their videos are like two, three minutes or so. Um, just real quick one little like quick news reel or something like that. But that was great So yeah, I was wondering like what would be his criteria for joining the axis? You know, he got a better deal from um, The axis power so he could open up more crusty crabs all over the place and then yeah Didn't trust the United States and I guess he was right because they bombed that place to obliteration now, thankfully, if you didn't know, um, in the 60s, they uh, signed with the Soviet Union a, um, a treaty where they would not detonate and do their testing um, atomic uh, for atomic bombs. Nobody could um, in the atmosphere or underwater for the environmental hazards. So but even with that and the bombs that like you saw on the screen there um, are just like like incredibly more powerful than the ones used in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Um, because, uh, yeah, the, as, as through the 40s and then into the 50s, um, the bombs kept getting larger yields and used different technologies, you know, fission versus splitting atoms and stuff like that. But anyway, um, okay, it makes sense. What do you think? Do you think Mr. Krabs sided with the right side? 
let me know down below. All right, if you want to see more DocuDeBerry stuff too, you can check out some of the other videos um, that I have. I'll have them popping up here, the tiles around as we're wrapping up the video. And if there's any specifically you want me to check out, let me know. They've been very supportive. I asked them, you know, if it's cool that I uh, cover their videos. They said absolutely. So love to uh, help them out any way I can. Be sure to sub to them. Videos linked underneath. All right, we'll see you next time.